prior to Nepal, you were ambassador to Afghanistan. And during your tenure, the Indian-Afghanistan relations saw a lot of solidarity and strength. What were the major achievements in Afghanistan during your time? Well, as you know, Afghanistan went through a very, very tragic period in its history. It went through nearly 30 years of civil war and all kinds of fighting. Then it went through a very repressive Taliban regime. When I went to Afghanistan in 2005, Afghanistan was, had just started on the process of reconstruction. During my three years in Afghanistan, we were not only able to establish a very close relationship between the Afghan government and the Indian government, but also strengthen our economic cooperation program. When I went to Afghanistan, our assistance commitment to Afghanistan was less than $400 million. By the time I left three years later, the assistance commitment to Afghanistan had increased to $850 million. This included infrastructure projects like power transmission lines, roads, highways. It included educational projects like schools, vocational training centers. It included other community development projects. It included telecommunication projects, setting up telephone exchanges and so on. Also included a large number of Afghans who had been denied education for them to have scholarships to be able to go and study in India, which as you know is emerging as a major hub of education in this region right. and in fact even globally. I often hear some foreign experts talk about the similarities between Nepal and Afghanistan and you being the ambassador to both countries, uh, do you feel there's any similarities? Well, the similarity is that the Afghan people are also very friendly with India and so are the people of Nepal. But I think in terms of uh, the tragedy of history, I think Afghanistan has been through a much more traumatic time in its history because the civil war in Afghanistan has lasted for more than 30 years. And Afghanistan lost nearly one-fourth of its population became refugees. The size, the Afghan population about, uh, of about 25 million actually became much less. And uh, Afghanistan had in 2001 something like 7 million people living abroad as refugees in Pakistan, Iran and many other countries. I think in that sense Nepal has been much more stable and Nepal, the people of Nepal have been able to conclude their own peace process without having this kind of conflict and this kind of tragedy. And I hope that uh, if the government and the Constituent Assembly in Nepal can actually complete their, conclude their peace process and complete the new constitution within the deadline, we can see a new era of prosperity and development emerge in Nepal. Your Excellency, you are an avid photographer and artist and you, you have great interest in the classical music. When do you get time for your personal hobbies and, and love of art? Well, when I travel in Nepal, I invariably carry a camera with me. And uh, when I went to Lumbini last year for the Buddha Purnima, I thought it was a great opportunity. So I spent a lot of time uh, taking pictures and taking photographs. Nepal is such a beautiful country that uh, I think anybody here can be a good photographer. We saw one, in one of the newspapers that you know, of a picture of yours taking photographs in Lumbini. And, yes. Um, but during your time, will we see some renewed focus on the relations of India and Nepal in terms of culture, music, art? Because that's your hobby as well, and that's what our two countries have shared in the past. Because right now we see a lot of politics dominating the focus of Nepal and India. I think what has happened is that politics has dominated the people of Nepal in recent times and uh, that is why the focus has been more on politics but at the same time let's not forget that uh, between India and Nepal we also have a lot of other areas of cooperation and relationship even now um, there are a large number of Nepali students who go to India to study and uh, they study not only engineering or medicine or commerce or economics or history, but many of them go to India to study fine arts. They have traditionally, many of your artists here have studied in uh, Banaras. 
and many of them have studied at the JJ School of Arts in Mumbai. Similarly, many young Nepali students uh, go to India to study music because many of these traditions are common between the two countries. So there is a lot of cooperation. We have, uh, and in years to come, I think this should increase because as the art movement in Nepal becomes stronger, there are more galleries that get set up here. We should be able to have shared art camps, art exhibitions, music concerts, theater festivals, and a host of activities like that, which will help in bringing the people of the two countries together. Will we see that focus during your time? I certainly hope so. Great. Last year, the eastern part of Nepal and, and most part of Bihar was affected by the Kosi flood. What is the current status of restoration of Kosi front? Kosi was a very, very tragic development, both for Nepal and for India. And in fact, one of the most moving sites was when I actually went to see where the breach had taken place in early September uh, to the region. F but you must understand that just as there were about 60, 70,000 people in Nepal who were affected and who lost their homes, the number of people in India was something like 25 million. Yes. The tragedy in India was even at a larger, much larger scale that doesn't mean to say that uh, we don't feel sorry about what has happened. But it just it goes to show that Nepal and India share certain things in common. And our prosperity and our future, in some ways, is linked. Now, Kosi, there is a lot of misunderstanding about what happened in Kosi. And I think now the time is not to exercise uh, for an exercise in the blame game of who is at fault, the time is to be able to con complete the work of repairing the Kosi breach on time. Now this is something for which we need to work together. If there are frequent bans and hartals and the work gets stopped, then who suffers? It is the people of Nepal. If the Indians cannot complete, if the Indian engineers cannot complete the work on time, then ultimately the tragedy is for the people of both countries and this is where we need the cooperation of the Nepal authorities to ensure that the supplies for the repair of Kosi reach on time, that the people who are working to do these repairs are not hindered by the frequent buns and hartals and that they are able to complete their work. We need to complete it as soon as possible because the monsoon is in the coming. In a few weeks I think we'll have the monsoon and this problem might reoccur again. Exactly. There is a deadline because this year, as you have seen, we have, uh, we have not had a very uh, cold winter. In fact, we have seen that the temperatures have started rising earlier. And as a result of which, the water levels have started rising slightly before yes. than, let's say, last year. And therefore, we are even more acutely conscious of the need to complete the work as soon as possible. Your Excellency will continue our talks on, on Nepal and India after a short break. Do stay with us. Today's